Hello everyone. We are Group C11 from Vishwakarma Institute of Technology Pune, presenting the topic Instruction Execution Cycle from Computer Organization and Architecture with my group mates. Let's start with the registers involved in each instruction cycle. First one is a memory address register, that is MAR. It is connected to the address lines of the system bus. It specifies the address in memory for a read or write operation. Second is a memory buffer register, that is MBR. It is connected to the data lines of the system bus. It contains the value to be stored in memory or the last value read from the memory. Third is a program counter, that is PC. It holds the address of the next instruction to be fetched. And the last one is an instruction register, that is IR which holds the last instruction fetched. In computer organization, an instruction cycle, also known as a fetch, decode, execute cycle, is the basic operation performed by a central processing unit, that is CPU, to execute an instruction. The instruction cycle consists of several steps, each of which performs a specific function in the execution of the instruction. The major steps in the instruction cycle are First one is a fetch, in which read instruction bits from memory at address in PC and store in IR. Second one is a decode, in decode, instruction bits in IR encode, which registers store operands and the ALU operations. Third one is execute, ALU performs instruction operation on operands to compute results. Fourth one is fetch operands. In some CPUs, the operands needed for an instruction are fetched during a separate cycle before the execute cycle. This is called the fetch operand cycle. Fifth one is store. The control unit stores the ALU result to memory. And the last one is interrupt handling. It may occur during any cycle of the instruction cycle. An interrupt is a signal that CPU receives from an external device or software that requires immediate attention. When an interrupt occurs, the CPU suspends the current instruction and executes an interrupt handler to service the interrupt. These cycles are the basic building blocks of the CPU's operation and are performed for every instruction executed by the CPU. By optimizing these cycles, CPU designers can improve the performance and efficiency of the CPU, allowing it to execute instructions faster and more efficiently. Now, let us understand the instruction cycle by looking at each of its step one by one. Each phase of instruction cycle can be decomposed into a sequence of elementary micro operations. In the above examples, there is one sequence each for the fetch, indirect, execute and interrupt cycles. The indirect cycle is always followed by the execute cycle. The interrupt cycle is always followed by the fetch cycle. But the fetch cycle is either followed by indirect cycle or execute cycle and an execute cycle is either followed by the interrupt cycle or the fetch cycle. For both fetch and execute cycles, the next cycle depends on the state of the system. Here in this flowchart of the instruction cycle, we can see that we have assumed a new 2-bit re register called instruction cycle code ICC. The ICC designates the state of processor in terms of which portion of the cycle it is in. Here, the 00 bit is for fetch cycle, 01 bit for indirect cycle, 10 bit for execute cycle and 11 bit for interrupt cycle. At the end of the each cycle, the ICC is set appropriately. The above flowchart of the instruction cycle describes the complete sequence of micro operations depending only on the instruction sequence and the interrupt pattern. The operation of the processor is described as the performance of the sequence of micro operation. From this flowchart, let us first understand the fetch cycle. At the beginning of the fetch cycle, the address of the next instruction to be executed is in the program counter. The step 1 is the address in the program counter is moved to the memory address register MAR as this is the only register which is connected to the address lines of the system bus. The step 2 is the address in MAR is placed on the address bus. Now the control unit issues a read command on the control bus and the result appears on the data bus and is then copied into the memory buffer register MBR. Program counter is incremented by 1 to get ready for the next instruction. 
step 3 is the content of the MBR is moved to the instruction register IR. Thus, a simple fetch cycle consists of 3 steps and 4 micro operations. This diagram shows us those 3 steps and 4 micro operations. These 3 steps of the fetch cycle are related with the successive time units as follows. It can be better understood with the help of the next diagram. Symbolically, we can write this sequence of events as follows. Here, i is the instruction length. The notations t1, t2, t3 represents successive time units. We assume that a clock is available for the timing purposes and it emits regularly spaced clock pulses. Each clock pulse defines a time unit. Thus, all time units are of equal duration. Each micro operation can be performed within a time of a single time unit. In the first time unit, the contents of PC are moved to MAR. In the second time unit, contents of memory location specified by MAR are moved to MBR and the content of PC is incremented by 1. In the third time unit, the contents of MBR are moved to IR. Here we can see that second and third micro operations would take place during the second time unit. So now we are going to see execute. First we will see the indirect cycle. Step 1. The instructions address field is loaded into the memory address register MR, which is then used to fetch the address of the operand. Step 2. The instructions address field in the instruction register IR is modified by updating it with the operands address fetched in the previous step, effectively converting indirect addressing to direct addressing. Step 3. The IR now contains the modified address field and the instruction is treated as if it is used direct addressing from the start. The next part is execute cycle. Step 1. The address portion of IR is loaded into the MR. Step 2. The address field of the IR is updated from the MBR. So the reference memory location is read. Step 3. Now the contents of R and MBR are added by the ALU. Moving on, we will be now talking about the interrupt cycle. At the completion of the execute cycle, a test is made to determine whether any enable interrupt has occurred or not. If an enable interrupt has occurred, then the interrupt cycle occurs. The nature of this cycle varies greatly from one machine to another. So now, let's take a glance at the sequence of micro-operation. So there are three steps in this cycle. Step 1. Contents of the PC is transferred to the MBR, that is, the memory buffer register, so that they can be saved for return. Step 2. MAR is loaded with the address at which the contents of the PC are to be saved. PC is loaded with the address of the start of the interrupt processing routine. Moving on, now step 3, memory buffer register containing the old value of PC is now stored in the memory. So this were the three steps of the interrupt cycle. Now, we will be discussing about the uses of different instruction cycles. So the first cycle we will be covering is the fetch cycle. This cycle retrieves the instruction from memory and load it, loads it into the processor's instruction register. The fetch cycle is essential for the processor to know what instruction it needs to execute. Second, the decode cycle. This cycle decodes the instruction to determine what operation it represents and what operands it requires. The decode cycle is important for the processor to understand what it needs to do with the instruction and what data it needs to retrieve or manipulate. Step 3. Execute Cycle This cycle performs the actual operation specified by the instruction using the operands specified in the instruction or in other registers. The execute cycle is where the processor performs the actual computation or manipulation of data. Step 4. Store Cycle this cycle stores the result of the operation in memory or in a register. The store cycle is essential for the processor to save the result of the computation 
or manipulation for further use. So, these were the uses of different instruction cycles. Now we will see the advantages and disadvantages of instruction execution cycle. First advantage is standardization. The instruction cycle provides a standard way for CPU to execute instructions which allows software developers to write programs that can run on multiple CPU architectures. So the next advantage is efficiency. By breaking down the instruction execution into multiple steps, the CPU can execute instruction more efficiently. After this, we will see the disadvantage that is overhead. The instruction cycle adds overhead to the execution of instructions as each instruction must go through multiple stages before it can be executed. So the next is complexity. The instruction cycle can be complex to implement, especially if the CPU architecture and instruction set are complex. This complexity can make it difficult to design, implement and debug the CPU. Now we see the issues of different instruction cycle. So there are the five issues of different instruction cycle. First one is the pipeline hazardous. As we know that the pipelining is a technique used to overlap the execution of a multiple instruction by breaking them into smaller stages. However, pipeline hazardous occurs when n one instruction depends on the completion of a previous instruction, leading to delay and a reduced performance. So this is the first issue. Second issue is the branch prediction errors. Branch prediction is a technique used to anticipate which direction a program will take when encountering a condition branch instruction. However, if the prediction is incorrect, it can result in a wasted cycle and decreased performance. So this is the second issue. Third one is the instruction catch misses. So instruction catch is the fast memory use to store the frequently used instructions. Instruction catch misses occurs when the instruction is not found in a catch and needs to be retrieved from the slower memory, resulting in a delay and decrease performance. So this is the third one issue. And fourth issue is the level, instruction level parallelism limitation. So instruction level parallelism is the ability of a processor to execute multiple instructions simultaneously. However, this technique has a limitation as not all instruction can be executed in parallel, leading to reduced performance in some cases. So last issue is the resource condition. Resource condition occurs when multiple instructions require the use of the same resource, such as a register or a memory location. This can lead to delay and reduce performance if the processor is unable to resolve the condition efficiently.